the outside world, it's noisy, but according to my next guest, so is your inner ego. As women, we don't typically associate ourselves with that word ego, but psychologist Tom Golightly says showing up, it's showing up in more ways than you think, and it's hurting your self-esteem. So, ego, for most people, I say Tom, it's not really a word that we associate with women, right? We're not saying, I'm the best, right. forget the rest, but you're saying that it shows up more than we think it does. It might, and, and sometimes it's because we, it, it's unintentional, right? We put a lot of ourselves into certain roles, and especially uh, when we talk about motherhood, when we talk about work, we have varied things, and sometimes we get a sense of self, and we depend on other people to give us worth, to give us validation, mm. and we might be overly narrow, we might be overly rigid with how we want people to give us that feedback, and sometimes that ego gets noisy. It's like, I want this. Why can't someone notice me? Why don't you give me that attention that I'm looking for? That's where the self-esteem comes in. And, it, and we're depending on other people, and it's giving up a little bit of control over how we can feel about ourselves. And it might even really bleed into a lot of other areas in life. Okay, and then we think of ego as, t as, as too much confidence, mm -hmm. but when it's hurting your self-esteem, how you say we're easier to offend. You say that that's affecting you. A lot of times it's because we, we might even be fishing for, please give me something positive oh, okay. with all of these, uh, with all the energy that I'm giving to this one area. When you start to not get it, and when you start to even maybe even hear opposite, like you're not doing as well as you think in that area, it really does hurt us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we can react, it can really get in the way of interactions, it can get in the way of how we feel about ourselves, not just in that one area, but in all the areas of our life. That, and I keep thinking of the words when you keep saying it's what we expect, it's what we think should happen, and that's where our ego is playing into that self-esteem. If we, if we have all these expectations, if we're hoping for these things, that's where it's playing in. So you are gonna teach us how to help quiet that ego and first remind ourselves of the multifaceted sense of identity. Explain that. So we are more than one piece, uh, and, and we do spend more time in some areas than others, and, and we tend to identify ourselves with the things that we do a lot. And I, the metaphor I like to use, it's, it's if you've seen videos from those personal drones, and if you've seen a little kid fly it and they zoom right in, and you're like, what are we, it might even make you a little seasick, and you're like super narrow. But then when you pull that drone out and, and it does what it's meant to do, mm. and you see this broad picture and this mm -hmm. beauty, uh, that's kind of what we're getting at when we say, let's, let's broaden who we think we are. And instead of having this, the, all the spotlight on the one area or, or the area of focus that's just too myopic, if we pull back and see we're much more than this, we don't need to fish for the compliments from others from that one area. I work with a lot of athletes and they're like, why can't my coach ever give me the thing that I want, which is you're the best player I've ever coached. Mm. It's never coming the way that they're looking for it, right? Mm -hmm. But if we can see, well, maybe you're not getting that feedback, but what feedback are you getting? And you're probably killing it in all the other areas of your life. Let's mm -hmm. not let the lack of feedback in this area mm -hmm. impact how you're doing in all these other areas. Expand that view, look at it a different way. Next you say, seek to understand. So a lot of times we've narrowed, like right? we've got the, the, the drone videos is a little too focused and sometimes it's on ourselves. Mm. And so we're so worried about the energy that's inside that we're not looking or seeking to understand the perspectives that other people might be having about a thing. And we get so rigid with it and stuck in it that we're sometimes unable to really seek that out. I, I know I do this unintentionally sometimes. There's just so much going on in life. I might be sitting in a meeting with coworkers and I'm just, my bandwidth is so limited. It's drunk, yeah. And so it, it's not intentional necessarily, but sometimes we've got to just like check that and say, mm -hmm. hey, okay, someone's telling me they're seeing it this way. Let me be curious about that. Let me understand where they're coming from a little bit and check that energy that might be way too focused on what's going on inside and needs to be just a little bit outside yourself. That self-reflection piece. Next is cultivate a growth mindset. So this p is a piggyback from the first one a little bit. We sometimes get feedback, and especially if, if, if the role or the identity is important to us and that ego is like, please notice, and you get the opposite, mm -hmm. it's like, wait. You know, and you're like, <laughs> Wait no, one I second. know myself, right? And and just as as we get these pieces of feedback, all feedback can be good feedback. 
let's hear and incorporate that instead of going with that over defensiveness or that that ire or whatever that might be coming up really seek to kind of say all right how are they seeing me so it is perspective taking but it's also taking that insight you're collecting from someone else and making it useful to you yes maybe i do have an area that i need to grow on and yeah. that's totally fine i feel like it's that ego that comes when you immediately want to lash back you're like no yeah. no no, i know yeah, exactly I, I know when you don't know <laughs> yep. that's something we're working on at our home is that growth mindset of being open to mm -hmm. hearing everyone else and i had no idea but that relates back to ego so mm -hmm. that's something we're going to continue to do now even more <laughs> Um, be in the now without being consumed by it. So we talk about mindful living and I'm, I'm absolutely, you wanna be in the present, but sometimes the present can be so heavy that we get lost in it. And uh, when those difficulties show up, it, it gets kind of foggy and, and we notice the fog and sometimes we start to make decisions to remove the fog. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we really aren't very satisfied with what's going on. So instead of making decisions uh, to take care of that fog, it's, it's to look at your compass points, your values, mm -hmm. all of the things that are important to you. So instead of steering away from the fog, no, trust yourself, you're gonna work through the fog so we don't get lost in it, recognize that we're in it, but we don't have to make all of our decisions about the moment, remember our values, remember where we're going, and, and we'll kind of work through that, that noisy ego that's demanding. So good, Tom, so good. <laughs> Notice that ego, quiet it. Thanks so much, Tom. You're welcome.